Hey everyone, welcome to another video. Today's video, we're going to be doing generator load bank testing. This video is at what is my high school and what is this that we're doing? Well, we're testing the generator, but we're not doing it like any other test where we just start it up and transfer load. This isn't having anything to do with the actual transfer switches. This doesn't change how the school is powered. This isn't gonna power the school. It is strictly a test of the generator to make sure that it can run at or near its maximum capacity for an extended period of time. You may think, well, doesn't that happen every time the power goes out? Well, not really. Because you want to size your generators to be able to run the building. You don't want to go too crazy and oversize the generator, but you also certainly don't want to undersize it. So what that ends up with is the generator really never gets ran at its maximum load. Because even if you had every single thing that the generator feeds on in the building, you're still probably not going to reach its maximum load. That's what this load bank testing does, which we'll be doing today. This gets done at every generator in the school district, and it has to be done once a year, and it has to be done for two hours once a year. On a brand new install, for the first time the load testing's ever done on the generator, it's the same idea, but it has to be done for four hours instead. Now, sometimes you can't always get the generator to max load, but they try and load it up as close as they can, which sometimes you can't, depending on what the generator's rated at and what load bank you're using as sometimes fake load that you will apply to the generator sometimes you're, you might not have settings that will be able to get you right there because there's set increments that you can add load and sometimes you may end up under its maximum load and then the next step up it over the maximum load which obviously you can't do that or you'll trip the breaker or damage something so what is this load bank exactly? Well, it basically applies a load, a resistive load to this generator to be able to test it at a very high current. So basically it's a bunch of heaters with a fan and it's just a big old resistive load and there's some fans that blow the air through it to keep it cool and it's basically a giant heater. Anyways guys, that's enough storytelling. Let's get into the video. We've put the generator into stop mode so it doesn't automatically start when we're disconnecting building power and to uh, tie into the load bank. So we can acknowledge that. for 600 volts. This generator has two breakers, one at 40 amp, one at 70 amp. Generator can put out 57 amps at 600 volt. That's why the wires are so small. Uh, 70 amp goes to the life safety transfer switch. 40 amp goes to the general backup power transfer switch. So that one's bigger because it's got to run all the lights, emergency, fire alarm, um, smoke control system fans, which is huge, 76,000 CFM worth of fans on emergency power. At 600 volt, that can go up to 100,000 100, watts.
bang on 60. Does that tell you amperage too? Yeah. 59? Yeah. yeah, so that's that's like right at the limit. Yeah. Sweet. load is on the generator the generator the load bank lines up pretty well because sometimes you can't get it exactly at the generator's max or sometimes you end up far from the max and the next step puts you over it just kind of depends this generator uh, we're able to get the load bank right to right to 60 kW so it's pulling I think it we're able to get the get it right to the maximum of the generator so That'll run for a couple hours at maximum load, test that the generator can sustain it, and uh, yeah, generator's good for 57 amps, the generator says we're pulling 55, the load bank says we're pulling 59, so uh, the generator guy was telling me that if we turn the lights off maybe 10-20 minutes into it running at full load, you'll be able to see the turbo will get red hot where you'll actually be able to see it, and apparently that's perfectly normal, that's what it's meant to do. You just don't shut it down right away, you let it cool down. So that'll be cool to see. I hope the turbo gets hot. He also said sometimes they spec the engines to be rated at more power than the generator head, the actual alternator. So uh, sometimes it might not get red hot. You just, it'll depend on how they spec this unit. So that'll be cool to see. I just acknowledged the fire alarm. This is a little, little small load bank though. Uh, as the generator is only a 60, KW at this school at 600 volt. That's all they needed. But our new middle school and elementary, I did a load bank test with this guy a couple weeks ago. We've done most of the, we've done a lot of the schools now. This is the only one I'm filming, as I don't want to be bugging the guy too much. But I figured this one's my school. You guys know this school best, so I show this one. But we have a 250 kilowatt at our other school, which that one he had the load bank trailer because that one could get loaded up pretty heavy. I think nearly 240 amps that one's rated at. So, uh, yeah.
Oh, that's hot. <laughs> we had to run to another site. The generator test ended about an hour ago. Used up some fuel. It's at 64%. I want to say it was at like 89 before. But there again, this fuel gauge isn't actually accurate. Yeah, it used some up. It was also running at 100% load. Amperage on the load bank was saying 59. This thing's rated at 57. If you do the math on it, um, 60,000 watts divided by 600 volts divided by 1.732 for your three phase, I believe, gives you 57 amps. And we load bank said we were pulling 59. This said 55 but it's all back online, so Firelands happy now. Everything's all good in here. It's still warm, that's for sure. Actually, it's a nice temperature now. It's still hot. Okay, yeah, it's getting really hot. But there's your two hour load bank test. Alrighty guys, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Alrighty guys, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know I didn't film the whole process. I didn't want to be too much bugging the guy because I wasn't sure if he wanted to be in the video necessarily and uh, I didn't want to be too annoying. So like I said, we have to go around the school district and test all of the generators for two hours at their rated load or at least as close as we can get to it because this one was a lucky one that you could get the settings on the load bank right to 60 kW and it's a 60 60 kW generator but some of the generators you don't get that lucky and you like you'll be under it on one setting and then the next setting goes over so you have to go with the under one of our schools actually I had the uh, I had to flip the the transfer switch too because it was a parallel f feed two breakers uh, each breaker was at I think it was 220 amps or maybe it was 100 no 125 amps each breaker and uh, we could only get to like 60 amps on the transfer switch and then or sorry on the load bank and then the next option over put us well over the 125 amps so we would have blown the breaker because the next one took us to uh, 140 amps so we could put on the 60 or whatever we could get it up to and then we could flip the one transfer switch that was still tied on because we had to disconnect the one transfer switch to tie in the load bank and then the other side was still connected to the transfer switch so we could manually flip that transfer switch and put the building load on it to help us load the generator a little bit more. Anyways, that's just sort of what happens is every situation depending on generator size is a little different. But anyways guys, that's going to be it for this video. I know this one wasn't the best put together. I tried my best here though with what I was working with. So if you guys did enjoy it, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you do have any comments or questions, feel free to put those in the comments section. And if you do enjoy my channel, make sure to subscribe. That would help me out. Also, I do have an Instagram account at Pickle700 for bonus content and content posted earlier than you'd see it on the YouTube channel, that sort of thing. Alrighty, guys, that's all I got. Thanks for watching.